Thank you, Madam President. I rise to express my strong support for Every Child Achieves Act that is now pending before the Senate. I want to commend Chairman Alexander and Ranking Member Murray for working in such a great bipartisan fashion that's brought this to the bill to the floor that will improve the quality of education for children across our country. The Every Child Achieves Act puts state and local officials back in control of our local schools. As we heard from the Senator from Kansas, Senator Roberts, his hard work on this, this bill also stops the Department of Education from conditioning federal funding on the adoption of national standards like Common Core. Importantly, this bill also makes sure that parents and tax, taxpayers continue to have access to important information about how the schools in their communities are performing. The Every Child Achieves Act deserves the Senate's support this week. Last week, the Senate unanimously adopted an amendment that will allow community school programs the flexibility to use federal funds to pay for us a site resource coordinator at their school or local education agency. This is important to the state of West Virginia. We have community schools. Community schools programs provide important health, nutrition, and other key services for many of our West Virginia students who are unfortunately living in poverty. The amendment passed last week will allow those programs to better coordinate with community partners to provide resources and support for our children in need. And I was happy to work with Senators Brown and my fellow Senator from West Virginia, Senator Manchin, to see that that amendment passed. I also want to talk briefly about a bipartisan amendment I introduced with Senator Durbin. He spoke about it just a few minutes ago on the floor that takes important steps to create transparency for students and families. It does so by allowing students to know or, and parents to know the quality and progress of their schools as it relates to college readiness. This amendment would require states and local educational agencies to include post-secondary enrollment data on the existing report card measures that are included in Every Child Achieves Act. It also encourages the inclusion of data on post-secondary remediation. It's supported by dozens of organizations, including the College Summit, the Business Roundtable, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, because this amendment seeks to improve the education outcomes of our students. Parents and students alike deserve to know that they are being adequately prepared to enter and succeed in post-secondary education. Including these simple, easy to understand measures on state and local report cards will provide them with the information they need to make informed choices about their future education. And additionally, this data will help states and school districts target limited in, uh, resources in the schools that need it most. This amendment was carefully crafted to avoid putting onerous and additional bur burdens on our schools and states. Nearly all the states already have made the investment necessary to collect, link, and report this data. In fact, the majority of states are already reporting it. Currently, 40 states pr produce high school feedback reports that include post-secondary enrollment data. More than 30 states already include some measure of post-secondary success, success as, as, such as uh, remediation rates. Adding post-secondary enrollment and remedi remediation rates to existing report car measures included in Every Child Achieves Act would ensure that students, parents, educators, and policymakers have access to critical information about how well our high schools are preparing students to enter and succeed in post-secondary education. The end result will be successfully restoring decision-making to those who know best, the students and their parents. I urge everyone supporting these amendments, but also in supporting the bill. With that, I yield back.